the project chatbot with Amazon Lexia. Right, so now in here, what we are going to do is we are able, we will be creating a chatbot. Now, when we say chatbot, you may have seen chatbots available all across multiple websites, right? So almost every website that we can think of, they all have this automated system through which we can get the support by simply a chatbot, which is available on their website. Whether we talk about, whether we talk about any of the website, right? If you talk about any of the website, they all have been running chatbot systems, correct? So that we can use the chatbots in order to get notified, and then we no, because as a matter of fact, ninety percent of we get not a ninety percent, but eighty percent of queries are repetitive. When you say repetitive, that means these are all our common queries, and they can be solved without any kind of human intervention. And now, when we are saving a good amount of time on humans, right? We'll be creating a, a dot .NET Core chatbot using Amazon Lex. So Lex is a service through which we can design the entire chatbot where we can upload our intent. We can design the entire flow of how the conversation has to proceed. So in Lex, we can define the intent. We can, we can also integrate the voice based systems. We can design the entire flow of the entire conversation. And then that conversation can be plugged into our, to our Lambda, to our Lambda services. And then this should, and then once we are done, then we can deploy this on the, on the website or, or we can integrate that with our own website, right? So for example, the users will be texting order flowers and this will be processed and then, then this request will be coming down to the Amazon EC2 server. And then this request will be passed on to Lex. And then this is going to be processed by Lambda. Lambda is a part of NoSQL or not NoSQL, serverless computing platform through which we can process the request. So instead of deploying the entire server, we can use it as a part of of handling the serverless request and then it can be monitored using CloudWatch and what the request has in process, it can be sent back, it can be sent back to Lex and it can be returned to the end user. And in here, the entire architecture, it will be, we'll be using AWS Lambda, Amazon Lex, Amazon Cognito to communicate with a, with a .NET application deployed on an EC2 instance. That exactly is what we will be trying to achieve in today's session. And guys, since since we are since the audio and video is fine for everyone, in case you're having any kind of trouble with the in the audio and video part, so you can try rejoining the webinar or you can try changing the network. That will solve the issue from your side. So now let's first of all start our journey with understanding what exactly is a chatbot. So chatbot, as we know, is a computer program which conducts a conversational conversation in natural language via speech or a text, like we have been discussing on the websites. So when we are trying to converse with any support team or any support system, then it understands. Suppose if the if we as a human user, if we type in okay order flowers, then it will understand okay what exactly that the consumer is trying to to say here, right? It will automatically know what exactly is the intent of the user and how the, the same has to be processed back and then the results should be sent back to the user, right? So, and that exactly is what a chatbot. For example, let's, let's say if we open the same scenario, for the same, for the same scenario that we have seen. Now, as soon as we click on, on support on chat with us, then again, it, as soon as we type it, okay, let's go or let's start, it will automatically give us a set of responses, right? And that exactly is what we achieve by the concept of chatbots. So that we can automate the entire process easily. All right. And we know that the first chatbot, the first chatbot was created back in 1966 to mimic human conversation. And the chatbot applications, again, it is applicable to almost every vertical on online shopping, booking tickets, news reports, or a food. So they are almost applicable in almost every vertical that we can think of. They are applicable in almost every vertical that we can think of. And again, chatbot types are now they are command bots, they are self-learning bots. That means again, in the command bots is they have a specific set of commands. They have a specific set of commands and they start in, interpreting accordingly. Or if we want them to learn on their own, so based on however the users are given the command, we want them to learn on their own, then that is something that we can achieve by using the concepts of self-learning. So here we can apply deep learning and machine learning modules 
and the system can keep on improvising on its own to increase their entire response time. So that the next time we don't have to train the system, system would have been trained on its own. That exactly is what we try to achieve by using the self-learning bots. And what are you right? So again, here we can see. Now let's start with a discussion on Lex. So Lex is a service. Now we had discussed yesterday. We had discussed yesterday that AWS consists of multiple services. AWS consists of 150 plus services from different from different categories. For example, we had services for we have predefined services for computation for storage for networking for different parameters right for iot for arvr for artificial intelligence right for databases so there are multiple scenarios there are multiple there are multiple services available and lex is a service available inside the inside the artificial intelligence system where we can use the where we can use amazon lex to build conversational interfaces that we can easily integrate into any application using voice and text. And when we say when we say conversational interface, that means we have to make sure that we are able to we are building a system which can easily interpret what exactly is being is being given as the input to the system. Now input can be in both formats. Input can be input can be in the voice or it can, input can be in the text format as well it input can be in both right so when we say voice format now we know that we have our assistants like we have alexa we have siri right so we have so here we can use this entire system to simply automate the task correct or we can or we can use the text part as well to type in the command and then it will behave accordingly then it will behave accordingly so there are multiple ways through which we can give the commands to the system and then it will process it and then it will give the desired result output accordingly then when we talk when we talk about processing the input given by the user we have to use something called as natural language processing called as natural language processing called as nlp so natural language processing is we know that in english we have the same words which mean different things we have same words which mean different things here right because again same words when we say same words means different thing that means when they are used in different contexts, they mean completely different things here. Okay, so where we right now, where we be used in differently, then they, they mean simply different things. For example, suppose we have a date. For example, let me showcase you what exactly we are talking about. For example, let's say if we open up these kind of sentences, like we have this one. Now, when we talk about date here, right? So now, when we talk about crane, when we use the bird is a crane, that means we are talking about a bird type, right? Then we can, when we use the crane in a sentence, she had to crane her neck to see the movie. That means we are talking about a physical movement. And again, if you talk about in this scenario, they had to use a crane to lift the object. Then we don't we don't mean that we had to use a bird. We don't have to, we don't mean that we had to use a bird in order to lift the object, right? That's why here we have to make sure. That's why here we have to make sure we are learning these exactly as per a we are. The system understands in which context the, the entire response is given, right? So, for example, let's suppose if we if we ask the system, okay, now show me images of a crane, right? Of the bird crane. Then again, if the system shows us the image of an actual crane used for for lifting the object, then that will be an incorrect response. So we have to make sure that the user system understands in which context we are giving the command, so that they can process it and then they can give the desired results accordingly. Right. Same way for the face. Same way, like we have, like we have date. Now, date is an actual date, or date can be going out, or they get, they get, it can be, it can simply mean going out together. Right. Same way, we have leaves. The children love to play the leaves. That is a actual leaves, right? And then they they do not like when their father leaves for work. So these words they mean different things. As system, it needs to understand in which context we are giving the command. And a simple example is Google and all the search engines. Why you think has Google such? It's because of the accuracy in which the results are being generated. So Google exactly knows what exactly we are looking for as per the query that we have entered, and that exactly is the reason for their success for last two decades now, right? So are we clear on the user intent as a part of natural language processing till this point? Why exactly we need it? 
Please give me a quick information, guys. Are we all clear on why exactly we need NLP as a natural language processing? To take care of these different contexts here, correct? To take care of these different contexts. Because if we don't have a better understanding, if our system that we are trying to develop, it doesn't understand the context in which the commands are given, then there's no way we can succeed with that system. That has to be improvised. All right. And then we have ASR. Then we then along with that, we have ASR. ASR refers to automatic speech recognition. Now, this is now natural language processing is based on the on the command as well. That means what kind of command we are trying to give here, right? Based on the textual format. And same way, if we have to speak up, for example, let's say we use Google Assistant, we use Alexa, we use Siri, right? So if we have to use, if we are using these kind of voice-based system, we have to make them understand what exactly we are trying to speak. We have to make them understand our different, our different dialects, how the words are pronounced, which particular voice-based system means what, right? Because again, we know that even in english or in any language there are multiple dialects right they can be multiple variations in which each and every word they are pronounced so we have to train the system with thousands and petabytes of data so that our system understands okay a single word a single word how is that uh, what are different ways in which they can be pronounced and what exactly it means so that it can behave accordingly right a simple method is a simple a simple example is let's say we are training the system okay what exactly schedule means right for example we have something as schedule now we know that in sana we have simple word as schedule kindly excuse for this beautiful beautiful calligraphy that's what happens when you try to write using a mouse pointer and then suppose if we are trying to to train the system for schedule now we know that in some dialects we say we say schedule in some dialects we say we say schedule and again, schedule can also be different for when we when it is in the in the voice for a man, for a woman, and for a kid or for a child, right? And they can be multiple dialects. Some may say schedule, some may say schedule, right? So it has so we now we have not using this speech recognition, we have to train the system what are different variations in which a given word can be spoken, in which particular tone, and that that's how we can make sure. That whether a, a man, a woman, or a kid speaks the same word, and, they, and even though in in different dialects, it can it can know okay that whatever has been given, it means the word schedule, so that it can start behaving accordingly. That exactly is what we mean by ASI as an automatic speech recognition, right? So are we all clear on ASR as well? Please give me a quick information, guys. Are we all clear on the concept for ASR as well? Please give me a quick information, everyone. Perfect. Thank you for the information, everyone. So now let's erase this up. And then Lex has multiple components. Lex has multiple components. So before we go ahead and see the hands on for Lex, let's see what exactly are the different components of Amazon Lex. First of all, we have bot. We have Amazon bot. So Amazon bot is simply an artificial intelligence program that simulates the interactive conversation. That simulates the interactive conversation. That exactly is what Lex is all about. And that means you now at the end, we have to create a bot, right? At the end, we do have to create a bot so that it can try to interpret whatever we are trying to speak here, right? That's the only way of making sure that they are able to interpret what exactly we are saying, correct? And that exactly is what Amazon bot is. Then we have to define intent. That means what exactly we are trying to, to get from the users. For example, suppose we want that initially, initially, if we ask, okay, what suppose let's say we are building a chat bot for, for Pizza. Let's hope for Pizza Hut. Let's open up a notepad. Now, when we say intent, when we say intent, let's understand what exactly intent is. For example, let's say we are trying to build a chatbot for McDonald's. For example, let's say we are trying to build a chatbot for McDonald's. 
Now, as a first question, what we can do is we can ask the user, okay, what would you like to order? What would you like to order, right? Okay, let's do one thing. Now, as a first part here, now we can ask the system, okay, what would you like to order? What would you like to order? Suppose this is the first question that we are trying to ask the user. Once they arrive on the website, we can ask them, what would you like to order, right? Now, as a response, as a response, the user can, can they can be multiple response, right? So basically, now here we can segregate it in such a manner. So whatever the user enters, for example, if they enter, okay, they would like to have a fry, fries, right? They will, they will like, to, like to order a Mac meal or suppose they only like to add a fries or Mac meal or fries with Coke, fries with a soft drink. So whatever they would like to order, right? So whatever the input is that is coming from the user, we want to store that input. We want to store that input as the order, as the order type, right? So whatever the response of this question would be, we want to store them as a top, as a order type, as an order type here, okay? That means now, once we have registered the order type, now the user, now the same question can be, or now the uh, now another another round of question can be. Now we can ask the user, okay, what exactly? For example, at what time? Or suppose we can ask them, okay, take away or dine in or dine in. So again, this can be the next question here. We can ask the user, okay, if they want to take it away, take away, it's a takeaway order or it's a dining order. We can ask them, it's a dining or it's a takeaway. Now, if the user responds, okay, now based on the response they are entering here, suppose they, they respond back by takeaway or dining. They can be two major, they can be two major responses. So whatever the, the response is, we can store them as a part of, again, as a, like that takeaway or dining, we can define them as an order type, as a delivery type here, correct? Whatever we are, we trying to, we are trying to interpret that, so that whenever the order is generated, now the backend team will automatically know what the order, what the order is, what the order is, and what the order type is, whether it's a it's a takeaway or it's a dining, right? So they will automatically get the get the order and the order type as well, so that they can start processing the order accordingly, right? So this is the, so whatever we are going to create here and whatever we are trying to store the response as in that is what we define as intent. That means what exactly the response what we are going to ask and whatever the user respond in which context we are trained we are we will be accepting that particular response so that we can process it accordingly. That exactly is what we mean by intent. Right. So we can for example here we can simply uh, we whatever the response is we can save it as name city place time type whatever we want it to be saved as and then we have slots so slots are parameters that an intent might require for example let's say we have some conditional for example so we, we, we may define some kind of condition or we may define some kind of of custom slot types that we are going to discuss and see we can define slot type if we have a some if we have some custom slot types that we want to create some conditional based conversation then we can use some of the previous templates that is already available in in uh, in lex or if we want to customize it on our own we can easily do that right and then we have intent fulfill for example we have intent fulfillment we there are two ways of fulfill the entire intent we can either build a lambda function to fulfill the intent or we can use the client application which will does the fulfillment fulfillment as in the actual processing for example now we have recorded okay what is the order what is the order type right now this order type this entire piece of information also needs to be sent to the backend team correct so that they can start processing order that means the entire processing here the entire processing of the of whatever has been entered we have to use a service right so either we can use a Lambda function as a part of serverless computing, or we can rely on the client application to process it as a part of intent fulfillment. And then we can define Lambda function as code hook, where we can customize user interaction. We can, if you want to customize it even further, we can initiate and validate a user input. Why we need to validate? For example, let's say we have asked a user, okay, what would you like to order? And if they enter 7 p.m., suppose they enter 7 p.m., now 7 p.m. is not in the menu menu for McDonald's, correct? 
so they need to authenticate whatever the response is we have to, we have to make sure that that response is valid or invalid now we know the 7 pm response is not valid because there is no there is no item on on the menu which reads 7 pm so this will be invalid suppose, suppose it, it happens then the same question will be repeated okay sorry we couldn't find your order so we couldn't find your your item can you please repeat again what would you like to order so there we are validating because again if the backend team receives the order okay someone has received had order for 7 pm now it will be completely bizarre because they know that there is no item at 7 pm then that is then there is no use of creating that particular automated system so we also need to validate whatever the response has been given by the user right And that's why we have to build it now. That's why here we can lambda use lambda function function as a code hook, and when it will simply it can be used to fulfill the user's intent one by one, right? And Rashmi lambda function. So Rashmi lambda is as we discussed is a serverless computing platform. Now when we when we talk about lambda here, we will be discussing that part. So when we say lambda, for example, let's say we are deploying a website. We have a code, right? We have a code that needs to be executed only for, let's suppose, only for 3.2 seconds, only for a fraction of a second, right? Now, if you know that this code mean, is meant to be executed only for 3.5 seconds, then again, if we deploy a complete full fledged server, then again, we have we know that even though we are using a cloud platform, we have to pay at least for one hour as a part of the billing process, right? So again, you if we if we know our code is meant to run only for a fraction of seconds, and if we deploy a complete server, which for which it is going to be built at least for now, it doesn't make sense, right? So what we can do, we can upload this code to a serverless computing platform called as Lambda, and then once we have the code uploaded to Lambda, so here we don't we have to pay only for the duration of time for which the code has been executed. For example, this code has been executed for 3.5 seconds. That means we here have to pay only for 3.5 seconds. Nothing less, nothing more. Is it clear now? Rashmi? Please give me a quick information. Perfect. Thank you for confirmation. So now let's raise this up. And that's why Lambda will be used for Lambda will be used for deployment purposes. Lambda will be used for the deployment purposes here. So that we don't have to worry about because again, the entire processing here, because again, we know that whenever we are talking about the response here, right? So we will so here, whenever the response has been recorded, because again, if we are running a full-fledged server, for example, if we had deployed a full-fledged EC2 server for the processing part, right? Now we know that until and unless the response has been recorded by the end users, the intent has been recorded, the processing cannot happen, correct? We know that at the until and unless we have the response, we, we record the intent from the user, until and as the entire intent has been recorded, it cannot be sent sent to the send to the backend team, correct? So instead of keeping an entire server on hold and up and running. To process that piece of, of information for a few seconds what we can do we can use lambda service right so whenever the the intent is recorded and then the then then the intent can be processed by lambda and suppose it took point or suppose they say it took 1.2 seconds to process it that means here we have to pay only for 1.2 seconds nothing less nothing more so that we don't uh, we don't waste the resources and the entire processing can be done in the faster manner that's how it works All right, because again, at the end, we we simply want to we simply repeat it here. And Himanshu, so if you want more number of times, again, then Himanshu, again, at the end, it won't be more than a couple of seconds, a fraction of a second, right? So it will be it will be processed only for that duration here, and then we have to pay only for that duration of time for which the code has been executed. Is it clear now? And that exactly is what we'll be using Lambda for. And to understand how exactly Amazon Lex operates, so first of all, we have to create a chatbot and configure it within the intent, slots, and utterances. Then we have to test the board on the text window slide provided by the Lex console. 
then we can publish a version and create an alias and then we can deploy the bot on a suitable platform that's how we have to start operating on top of amazon lex step by step and then we can say yes pretty we can say for small computation and for the computation it's a false small computation requirement if we have the requirement of computation for a small purpose or for only for a small period of time then we can use it there is it you know pretty perfect now let's first of all before we jump before we start our discussion on next topic as cloud formation let's see how we can go ahead and execute or how we can operate on amazon lex so for seeing how amazon lex works we have to go back to the console i'm sure you all must be having the access to aws console by now we had discussed on how we can sign up how we can sign up on management console so now let's get started so for getting started on top of amazon lex here we have in the service tab we have to search for a service named as lex here we can search for a service named as lex so in the service bar let's open up let's open up the service named as lex here we can search for lex we can use the service bar to search for any of the services that we are trying to that we are trying to get to Let's open this up. Okay, currently we are in Mumbai. So Lex, as we know, is supported in only selective regions here, not in all the regions. Lex is supported only in selective regions here right not in all the regions so what we can do is we can open up lex here and we can open up amazon lex and before we can use lex we can see currently lex is supported in north virginia in oregon sydney and ireland region so these are the regions that are currently supported it is not available in all the regions here right and Lex is a paid service, guys. We do not, we don't, uh, we don't get any of the services free of cost. It is a paid service. And I'm so again, currently it is that it is being generated, right? It is currently being generated here, correct? So currently, since it is still in the beta phase, and still it is, and that's why it is not available in all the regions. Still, it is being generated on a selective. It is available only for selective regions here, right? So now, what we can do is now here we can see the list of when we are in the amazon lex dashboard we can see the list of all the previous legs that we have created now in order to create a new legs or new chatbot we can click on create and now we have two options available either we can go ahead and create our custom bot or we can go ahead and use a template through which we can get started for example if you want to start from scratch we can click on custom bot we can define each and every parameter or if you want to use a sample, for example, let's say we want, we want to use a template for booking a trip. We want to use a template for order flowers. We want to schedule an appointment. So depending upon a requirement, we can use a template, which obviously we can customize, which we can customize step by step, which we can customize step by step. Now, once we have configured these, now for example, let's suppose we want to start with order flowers. We can simply choose order flowers, or if you want to start with a custom board, we can click on custom board. So let's say we start with a custom board here. We can define the bot name. We can define we can define the bot name here. Let's suppose we define the bot name as order flowers. Let's say we start with a simple bot by the name of order flowers. We are here. We are trying to order flowers by using 
the main purpose of creating this, this chatbot is we want to create we want to order flowers we want to order flowers that's a main purpose there's a, there's a main reason why we are creating why we are creating this entire chatbot to order flowers here now once we have the intent now once we have defined the name then we can choose the output voice if we are trying to use the voice based system as well then we can choose the output voice now i'm sure that you will not be able to hear the voice here but again here they are just like if we have been using siri right if we have been using google assistant we can customize the voice right so they have some pre-configured voice templates available so we can choose which voice we want to use for our system so for example let's say we want to choose uh, Salil, Zona, Matthew, Ivy we can choose it accordingly we can choose it accordingly here right so for example we want to use the voice of Sally so as you can no, once we choose Sally here we will we will be here a small a small voice sample of Sally if we choose Joanna like Joanna so Joanna, Matthew, Ivy, Justin, Kendra. So for example, let's say if we are trying to create a chatbot. For example, let's say we are creating a, a chatbot for any toy store. Or we can use this child with this child voice by the name of Ivy. So depending, because again, we have we have to customize the entire solution. If we are creating a uh, we can say a kid store, a toy store, then obviously we don't want to use a, a grown-up voice. Then we can use the voice for a kid altogether correct right? so depending upon the requirement we can define that now here we can choose so for example let's suppose we are trying to use sally we can use a voice for sally itself we can use a voice for sally and then we can choose okay what kind of configuration we want to use here suppose if we want to hear a sample voice then we can okay what uh let's suppose let's say here we want to type in as we want to hear so whatever we want to hear as a sample, we can type in welcome to Lex. Welcome to AWS Lex service. Or let's suppose welcome to Eureka. So now if you click on play here now. So whatever we type in here, this will be played back in the voice that we have currently selected. And then we can define the session timeout. That means again. Now we have, we must have seen that if we are in a, on any particular domain here, as you can see here. So currently since we did not respond for a couple of minutes, now the entire session has been signed out, correct? As you can see here, since we did not respond for five minutes, the entire session has been signed out. So here we can find the, the session timer, the, the session timeout duration as well. For example, we want to keep the session open for, let's suppose 10 minutes. We can define 10 minutes to be our session timeout duration here right and then we can choose then we can choose a service for okay before sentiment analysis if you want to use this for our machine learning purposes that means in which context and what is the user sentiment in which they are given the command and then we can keep it to yes or no all right so if you want to enable this we can keep it to yes for which we can configure this at, later, at a later stage or we can by default we can keep it to no so in this hands-on, we'll try to keep it for no as of now. Then we have to define a role. So role is basically, let's say, roles are basically the, per the permission that we grant for one service to the other. For example, if we are trying, I suppose if we were trying to save the records for, for leg service into our S3 bucket, right? So roles are basically like the permission. So if one service wants to communicate with the other service, for example, here, if Lex wants to show something in S3, then we have to give a role that we have to create a role giving the complete right access to S3. Then only Lex will be allowed to make some changes or communicate to S3 itself. And that exactly is why we have roles assigned. So when we are creating a custom bot here, then the roles are already pre-configured so that we can use this role without having the need to go ahead and create a custom role for us. And then we can choose the COPA. So again, basically it's like a child protection here. So basically here we have to make sure that the our, our entire bot is comparing to the rules and regulation defined children's online privacy protection act. That means we don't have to, we won't be asking any kind of private information, especially from children as a part of the regulations. And this is an important regulation, especially for the European market. 
So we have to take care that we are taking care of these kind of parameters. So as a part of our hands-on, since we are not going to deploy this on any of the markets, we can keep it to no for now. All right. And then we can click on create. And then once we once we have defined that, we can click on create. So this will create one sample chatbot for us. Okay, auto class already exists. Let's suppose let's say here we do one thing, let's delete the previous bot so that we can use the current one. Let's go ahead and oh, let's do one thing. Let's create another bot by the name of auto class two. Here we can choose output voice as Sally. We can define the session to be 10 minutes. We can keep the sentiment as to be no, uh, to no and no for sentiment analysis. And then we can click on create. Now, once we define the entire entire bot, then we have to start customizing it. We have to start customizing it based on the intent, based on the intent as well. Based on the intent, we have to customize that particular parameter. All right, and here we can click on create intent. First of all, as you can see here, here are the, uh, the components of a bot here. Here we have to define intent, and then we have to define the different utterances, and then whatever response is being sent back from the user, then we have to define the slots for it, right? And when, when, and by the end, we have to define the business logic required to fulfill the user intent as a part of fulfillment. All right, so first of all, once we have the bot created, then we have to click on create intent. And now we can choose if we already have the intent created, then we can choose, then we can import it, uh, import, or we can say uh, if we can import the previous trend, or if you want to create a new intent now, we can click on create intent, or if you want to use any of the previous intent, for example, suppose if we are building any particular template, if you want to use any of the templates, for example, let's say we want to import the intent for booking a ticket or ordering flour or ordering food then we can go ahead and use it right so what we can do is for example if you want to start from scratch we can click on create intent we can define the intent name for example let's suppose we are creating the intent for flowers or not the opposite class order or order flower We can click on add. So as you can see, order flower has been created. Order flowers has been currently created. And now if we want to go ahead and start using it, now what we can do is first of all, we have to create the intent first, right? So for example, suppose first of all, here we have to define the utterance. Utterance as in the initiator. We can say the conversation initiator that is, that, that is something that we have to define here. For example, let's say if a customer types and ask, I would like to order flowers. So when the chatbot opens up, now we can define, if, if, when the chatbot opens up, we can define, okay, how exactly we want the, the conversation to start. For example, let's suppose here we did start with let's go. So same way we can start the conversation with, I would like to order flowers, I would like to book tickets, I would like to order pizza. So depending upon the intent we have, we, depending upon how the conversation needs to be started, we can define the utterances. We can define the utterances based on the requirement here. All right, and then we can open now. Here we can come back. So here we can see here we have the entire intent being defined. Then we can define these slots. Then we can define slots here. Now, once the entire number, once the uh, uh, once the utterance has been added here. Now, if you want to add more sample utterances, then we can also add that. Next is we have to define the entire slots all together. Then we have to define the entire slots all together. Like what exactly that we are trying to to, uh, to take the input from the users. For example, let's say here, we are trying to take the input as flower type. That means we now, 
once they type in as okay they ask us okay they like to do they like to order they like to order flowers right then first of all we'll be asking them what kind of flowers they want to order lilies they want to order real roses they want to order orchards they like what kind of flowers they are looking for so here we can define the slot type now they are predefined slot types available they are predefined slot types available for example let's suppose if we are building if we have been working if we have been building a slot for food then we could have search for food for example suppose if this was something for food establishment or food item that they are that they are ordering here right so currently we are going for flower type so we, or we already have a custom slot created and that is what we have as a flower type as a part of the entire slot type as a flower types now here we can ask a question now what question would be asked so that whatever the, the user answers for this question it will be saved as a flower type correct so here we can add okay so here we can type what type or okay, what type of flowers we are trying to ask here And now we can click on save intent. Now we can click on save intent. Now here we have added for four flower type. Now here we can ask for location like where we want them to be delivered. So now currently we are asking them okay, where exactly we want them to be delivered. We can ask them for the location as well. And then we can define slot type. Now this is going to be an address because again, whatever their user types in, we want this to be referred as a location, correct? So here we can define the address type. That means they are going to enter, for example, uh, suppose. Here we can ask them location as in city. For example, suppose we want to save them as a part of city itself, right? So here we can ask them okay, which city. So okay, we already have for Amazon ADC city itself. Now, here since now we know that it is currently available only in selective regions, that means again here it only has the, the list of cities for for Atlanta, for Europe, for Britain, and for US city. So currently, if we are building this for North Virginia region, then we can choose US city. So this for whatever the user's response of the users will be, it will be saved under city itself. For example, here we define as which city. If we ask user at which city, that means whatever the user types in as the response of which city, their response will be recorded as a part of city intent. Their response are going to be recorded as a city intent, right? And we are going to look at that part, guys. How to create the custom slot type? We are going to discuss that part step by step. First of all, let's discuss what are the available time slots. And again, if you want to go ahead and create our own custom slot type, we are going to discuss that part step by step. After we are after we are done with this parameter, all right. And once we are done, okay, and then we can ask them, okay, at what time? Suppose that we want to ask them at what time, or suppose we can ask them for a date. So then we can search for the no, in the, in the so slot type here. We can search for the slot type as the date itself. That means now here we want to ask for the day itself, like which day we want this to be delivered. And then we can ask them for time as well. I mean, as in at what time we want to record this, at what time we want the flowers to be delivered, we can simply search for time as well. So whatever the, the user response, the entire what time. That means now we are asking the users. We are asking the users what is the type of flower they, love, they would like to order in which city, it, on which date, and at what time. And now, if you want to make any of these parameters mandatory, because without that, we will not accept the order that we can make it mandatory. For example, we, for ordering, we need to know when which city, we need to know in on which date and on which time, right? So suppose if we don't need the time here, then we can simply exclude this part. We don't want to add them as a mandatory. That means if the user wants, they can skip this part as well. If they want, they can skip it. So we can record, so we can make these three parameters as mandatory, as required, right? And then we can define, and then we can define, we can define, okay, how exactly, if you want to give them a confirmation prompt, if you want to give them a confirmation prompt, so for example, suppose if you want them, okay, if are you sure you want to drink or, are you sure you want to order or suppose are you sure you want to, to order a drink and then we can define a drink name. We can define for a 
confirmation message, we can simply define that. All right. Or suppose if they want to cancel the order, if the, if the user says no, okay, your order will not be placed. So we can simply define in that confirmation prompt as well. Let's keep it simple. Let's not go for for prompt as of now to keep it to keep things simple. And then if you want to add to add multiple responses here. So for example, let's say thank you. Your order has been placed. For example, you want to showcase a simple message as thank you. Your order has been placed. If you want to include any of the parameters here, for example, your order, your order for lilies, for example, your order for uh, here we can define the flower type here. Here we can, if you want, we can define the entire type as well. Here we can define the type here. For example, suppose here we define the intent as flower type, right? So here we want to show you your order for flower type. That means this entire content for flower type will be automatically replaced with whatever flower they have been, they have ordered. So this will, uh, this is a custom response that we can greet the users that we can. Show the users once they are done placing the order. All right, and then we can simply scroll down and here we want to enable the response card or we want the user for reply here. Then we can wait or we can simply enable the response card. Now, once we are done defining the slots, once we are de done defining the entire user or sample utterances, then we can have to scroll down and here we have to click on save intent. So as you can see, our intent has been currently saved successfully. And now if we want to test it out, if you want to test this, we can click on build on top. So if you want to test the performance of the bot that we have currently created, we can click on build and this will continue to build the entire chat bot based on the utterances. Based on the utterances that we had currently defined here. Whatever we are defined here, it will be simply created. Now we may have to wait for a couple of seconds for the entire build to happen. It may take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes for the entire build to be created. Sometimes it may happen in a second, and sometimes it may take up to a few minutes for this entire build to be created. As you can see here. The flower build was successful. As you can see, the build was successful. And now, to in order to test whatever we have entered, in order to test whether it is working or not, we can we can simply go ahead and test the bot here. That means, for example, now initially, in, since we have also initiated the, we have also selected the voice based input. That means either we can type in or either we can speak up as well, right? So, for example, first of all, let's try with the text based command and then we'll try with the voice based command for example suppose if we type in as now even though we have defined the utterance even though we had defined for the utterance as order flower i would like to order flowers we can simply type in as order flowers order order flowers so again as you can see now this entire address does not match fully to what we had defined here so here we can start fresh. So for example, here we will define order plus. So now it, will, now it is going to ask us what kind of flowers we are trying to add here. For example, let's suppose we define as lilies. We want to order lilies. Then again, the next part was with city. So now here, for example, here we type in as NYC. Then it will ask us what date we want this suppose on on 15 April. And as you can see, time was not required here. Suppose that we want again, if we want, we can always ask for the time as if we want us to be added as a part of mandatory part. Correct? So as you can see. Here now, this has also showcases okay your order for lilies, right? So whatever the user has entered as a flower type, because that is what something that we define as a part of response. So your order for so whatever the user entered for lilies that has been recorded and that the same response has been sent back to the user, sent back to the user here. Correct. And for example, let's suppose here now this is the text based response. If you want to go for voice based, now we can speak up as well. For example, for speaking up, we can enable this mic. 
I would like to order flowers. Let's cancel this word. Now it is asking us what type? Lilies. It will process the audio input. Which city? New York. As you can see here, it, it successfully interpreted what, what we had spoken up, right? And then what date? 15th April at 9 p.m. Now, as you can see, it was it failed to validate. As you can see, it we, it was asking for a date here, but again, it failed to interpret. Okay, yeah, fine, thank you, right? So, for example, if we give the voice input again here, fifteenth April. So that's how the entire integration will be will be done here when my when we are launching any particular application for example we are trying to launch a website now website requires multiple services for example let's see here we also need to deploy an ec2 instance as a part of server website may require also a database service also like we have rds services website also require it may also require a static ip as a part of elastic ip it may also require the use of a monitoring system using a CloudWatch. It also may require to define multiple security protocols using security group. And same way, there may be multiple other services. So either we can deploy, either if we are deploying the entire, entire application on AWS. So either there are two ways of design the, of uh, provisioning the entire application. Either we can go ahead and deploy each and every service manually, or we can use a service such as CloudFormation. We can use a service such as cloud formation. So in cloud formation, we can design the entire blueprint of whatever we are trying to launch with the exact configuration that we want them to be launched with. And then CloudFront will, once we execute the CloudFront, this will launch each and every service with their configurations automatically. So that we don't have to invest our own time and resource in deploying the entire applications manually one by one. This all things can be taken care of automatically by using these that's the service of cloud formation. So for those who are having trouble, are we all clear on this part now? Palak, Robin. Anuj, everyone. Perfect. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. So we can erase this up. And cloud and cloud formation is basically used to simply provide the common language for us to model and provision uh, the entire services here. So here we can create the entire template. We can, if we want, we can store the template locally, or we can store it as a part of the S3 bucket that we did see yesterday. How we can go ahead and create one S3 bucket, and then we can use this cloud. Then tem, uh, we can use this template with cloud formation in order to design the entire blueprint here and get the output. Next is we have code pipelines. Next is we now and the templates here. These are written. These are written in. These are written in JSON script. So we, either we can have the template created in JSON or we can also use YAML scripting as well for deployment of each and every of these applications one by one. All right. And Chitin, so it, it is basically written in JSON or YAML format. So we can either write in, in any application. 
at the end it's a piece of code right so we can write it in in, at the, in any application we can save it up and then we can import it in cloud formation let me showcase you a quickly of how exactly it works let me showcase you how exactly it works here so for example we can come back to aws under services we can open up cloud formation we can open up cloud formation Let's open up cloud formation here. Let's log in. Let's try to log it to a console. Now, for example, let's say we, we want to create a cloud formation here. So here we can see here we have here we can use any of the template. If you already have a template available from either in stored in S3 or either as a local file, we can use both. If you want to use some of the sample templates, then we can suppose, let's say we are trying to launch a complete LAMP stack server, correct? So here we can choose a LAMP stack, by which, will use, which is currently using a local MySQL databases. Or if you want to use a LAMP stack server, which is using the RDS database, we can use this one. If you or if you want to start from scratch, we can click on create template and designer. We can click on create template and designer. And now here we can click on view in designer. Now, as you can see here, currently we have now the entire template has already been created. So as you can see here, here we have different components that like we have security groups, we have launch configuration template. We have we have listeners. We have the component of auto scaling. We have a target group. We have the load balancer and the MySQL database instance that we have currently deployed here. So here we have here we can see there are multiple components available on cloud formation, and for each and every component here we can see the parameters. We can see the parameters here. For example, launch configuration, right? So here we can see in terms of components, we can see what are the properties. That means which AMI we are trying to use when we are trying to, to deploy this. Again, what is the instance type we are going to launch? What is the security group that we are trying to launch? What is the key that we are trying to launch here, right? And then once it has been created, we can see what exactly the components will be when we are trying to launch as a part of each of these individual templates. Same as for load balancer, same as for load balancer, we can see what exactly the load balancer we are trying to launch here. That means we are trying to launch the load balancer again what are the listeners again what is the target group that we are trying to add here which port we are going to, to refer it to what is the protocol for it that means there are endless number of properties that we can define for each and every service that we want to be a part of the blueprint that we are designing being the solutions architect right lamp stack is simply like we have a lambda then we have the entire mongodb as a part of the entire service that we are that we are creating for a simple web application a simple web application that we can define as a part of launch configuration template right and for seeing the now for seeing a list of all what all properties are available here let me share a small link with you all like uh we have list of Properties for services and AWS. So, if you want to see a list of all what all the properties are available, we can use it. So, this lamp stack. So, that lamp stack stands for Linux, Apache server, and the MySQL relation database services along with the PHP language here. So LAMP stands for Linux, Apache server, M stands for MySQL database, and P stands for PHP. So it's a combination of different languages and platform through which we can design one web application.